So I have a lot to say about this update, and uh, I wrote. All so, all right. The original plan for this is like my my mind is going a mile a minute here because I haven't streamed in a month. Okay, so let me let me compose myself. All right. So I have a lot to say about this update, and my original plan was I was gonna make like a podcast sort of thing, just kind of condensing all of my thoughts down into something that's as short as possible, but. I played the game last night after I got back from my vacation, and some of my opinions had like a complete 180. So I want to like I need I just need, I'm just redoing it. I'm redoing it. So this is more like a, a chill out sesh with all of us here. I might play the game as I talk about it. Right off the bat, was the update mostly positive? Yeah, I'll say that I'll say that the update's mostly positive, at least in terms of the content that was added. A majority of it was very good. And I'm really happy about that. It's it's like a finally a good, tangible, significant improvement and everything. And again, I'm really glad that I'm 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 glad. I'm glad that that's the case. It's it's fantastic. It's a good day when Zesty Jesus is happy. I mean, listen again. Like a majority of my my comments on the update are are pretty positive, right? But there are it's, oh god, <laughs> there's just so much shit to get through. I'll just start. Okay, so before I like get to the actual like stuff that I haven't talked about before let me just talk about the war paints again because I I want to like say one more thing about the war paints now that I've had like a whole month to properly digest them for a while and see how everyone's been responding to them and all of that and I just want to say I'm gonna toot my own horn here I, I'm really sorry I don't like gloating I don't I don't like rubbing shit in people's faces I'm not a 10 year old child I, I'm not I didn't win like a schoolyard scrap and I'm like laughing in the face of my bully no I fucking hate it but I'm going to go back on that word for a moment. I'm going to toot my own horn here for a moment. I cannot tell you how happy I am that so many people are enjoying the new war paints. It, it makes me so glad that there has been such an overwhelmingly positive response to these new war paints, man. And it's it's absolutely... Like, we haven't seen this much widespread praise for any war paint case since, like, the 2015-2017 era, right? Like, even mainstream TF2 YouTubers are, like, praising them. That 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 has not happened ever, right? And, like, if, if word of mouth isn't good enough for you in terms of just, like, how, like, widely accepted these new war paints are, just, like, go look at the sales on the community market right now, right? The first time... This, this is the first time ever that the volume of war paint cases sold is exceeding the number of cosmetic cases being sold. This is a fact. There are more war paint cases being sold per hour by a significant margin than the cosmetic cases. And, and that's the first time it's ever happened in a game's history, ever. It's even outselling the winter 2017 case during the opening month of the update. That is insane. Not to mention that if you look at, like, this is the first time ever that we've had a mercenary grade war paint the simplest war paint added to date this the simple gray and black war paint right is consistently selling for over twenty dollars in strange factory new no other mercenary grade has done that in the game's history like I'll, I'll, i i i hope to god that there is a uh, a damascus mahogany because that is the only one that would even come close i can't i can't spell mahogany oh my god and steam is of course going to shit the bed so let's do damascus instead Steam, hello. You want to work? You want to work for me, baby? You want to? You want to? You want to? You want to? Come on, come on, work. Oh, love Steam. Come on, taking so and it's just dead. I love Steam so much, dude. Completely ripping me off my train of thought because ah, never mind. Anyway, I couldn't confirm it exactly for Damascus Mahogany, but this is the first time that a mercenary grade war paint has been selling for over $20 in Strange Factory New. That is nuts, and it is the simplest war paint added to this case to date. It's, it's fucking insane to me. It's nuts. Like, all of this, right? All of this is just more evidence that most players love these new war paints. More people than we thought wanted good war paints for a long time, and were not interested in the awful shitty slop. Like, no, no one wanted this, right? No one wanted fucking, I don't know, gingerbread winner. No one wanted this. No one uses this. No one likes this. No one enjoys tacky holiday prints like this. People very obviously want skins that look like the ones we got in this new case, which, for the most part, look like weapons that belong in TF2. What a notion. But an idea, but a thought, that something 
that looks like it belongs in TF2 is preferred by the players than something that looks like this. Listen, the reception of this new Warpaint case, right? The reception of this new Warpaint case is like... I mean, it, it honestly, like, I, I have not felt vindication like this ever in my life. Like, it, like, the amount, like, seriously, like, the amount of shit that I've been getting for, for just saying that war paints like this are bad, like, the, the volume of shit that I get for being critical of the workshop, for being critical of Valve, for adding this shit into the game, and calling it for what it is, as crap that people don't want to buy, right? Like, the, the, just the waves of crap I got for years over this, right? That doesn't matter anymore. Because all of this just proves I'm right. I'm right. We fucking got there in the end, right? People spoke with their mouths. They spoke with their wallets. And we finally got better shit in the fucking game. And that's all I wanted this whole time. That's all I fucking wanted. It's all I cared about, seriously. And listen, and don't get me wrong. I'm not saying I did this. I'm not saying that I made this war paint case happen. That is not what I'm saying at all. You guys did. You, the consumers, did this. Because no one was buying crap like this at all. No one wants this shit. We want the good shit. And we finally got it. My god. My god. And the only people in this... The sweet, sweet, sweet fucking irony in all of this is the, o the only people that I've seen complain about this war paint case are people on the community workshop not all of them just some people usually the more vocal ones those are the only people i've seen complain about them i'm sorry but no one wants your hyper fluorescent slop no one wants clip art no one wants shitty stock images and tacky crap man we just want good skins it's nuts it's crazy like ugh. i'm so happy i really am okay that's that that's that's enough tooting my own horn that's that's enough about that. It, it's it's pretty it's pretty nuts. It is pretty nuts. Like 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 they were calling it like I like I I'm not gonna say who, but I saw Emporium members saying like, oh hey this is oh it's the Zesty Jesus collection. These are all boring war paints. So, uh, why would they do this? It's like uh hey guess what? This is the most popular war paint case to date. Period. It's fucking crazy. And for those curious, uh, those curious, uh, my favorite war paint out of the new case is Steel Brushed. I fucking love this skin. It is phenomenally good. And look at the short, look at the shortstop, dude. Oh my god, look at this fucking skin. It's so good. Like, this, the, the beautiful simplicity in this skin is just, oh, it's so nice. Also, Warborn. I love Warborn so much. I had, I immediately bought one and put it on a panic attack. It's so good. I, fu I fucking love this war paint. It is... Like, like, the only war paint that I don't like in this one is Deadly Dragon. It's, it's, it's pretty shit. The rest of them are, are really, really good. Like, look at this. Team serviced in Battle Scarred. Look how fucking sick this is. Look at this. Battle Scarred Warborn. Look how fucking cool this skin looks, man. It looks so good. Like, even, like, when... So good. I'm just happy. I'm just happy. Phenomenal, phenomenal shit. All around, really. Okay, let's talk about the actual update. You ready? Let's, 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 I'm going to rip off the band-aid. Okay, I'm going to rip off the band-aid because I have to be that guy. I'm sorry, right? Like, I have to be that guy. Do I have, yeah, these are strange. So this is strange fact. Okay, I spend a lot of money. Also, fuck you, Uncle Dane, for inflating the price of these. Uh, this is strange factory new. Um, this is strange factory new. This is strange factory new. I'm sorry. Uh, this is strange field tested because this looks like a piece of bloody surgical equipment and that looks badass. I have a mod installed that removes the um, the bloody blade on the Ubersaw, but if I'm in like in a casual server, you see blood along the edges of this. It looks so fucking cool. Yeah, but uh, I, I did go out of my way to get a few of these in Strange Factory new. Uh, unfortunately, right on the day that Dane released his fucking video, so had to spend a little more than I was anticipating, but... Didn't gamble for them. I didn't gamble for them. I just bought them. Save your money and buy what you want, kids. Uh, but Dane's got good taste if he likes this one, so I will I will applaud him for that. When was the last time you saw any major YouTuber doing a mass unboxing? Probably not since Muse Elk in 2015. Yeah, crazy, right? Anyway, 
So let's. I'll, I'm going back to the the update itself, right? I'm gonna I'm gonna rip off the band aid. I'm gonna rip off the band aid because no one has really. How do I put this? Uh, it feels like people kind of get swept up in all of the key jingling, right? People get swept, swept okay. People, a lot of people get swept in all the key jingling. It's like, oh, we have all these new toys to play with, right? And that's good. It, like most of the good stuff, we get, like we got a lot of good shit, right? But I'll start with this. This summer update is the best update we have received since 2018, and that's really not saying much. It really isn't, right? And something I observed almost immediately, it just like really just during the opening week, is that you couldn't really address the horrendous shit show that was this update's delivery unless people immediately dogpiled on you and like started berating you for not praising Valve for a job well done, right? That's that's the first thing I saw. And like if you weren't obnoxiously fawning over this update, people would like kind of pile drive you into the ground. And I feel like I need to remind people, like, hey, this is Valve we're talking about here, guys. It's, it's like it's like the Emperor's got no clothes, you know? And this needs to be said. It's pretty, it's, it's laughably sad that Valve still cannot deliver a functioning update. A functioning update, right? This is a multi-billion dollar company with TF2 earning tens of millions of dollars a year, hosting hundreds of thousands of players, and they still refuse to allocate more than two pairs of hands working on this game willingly part-time. Two people is not enough to push a functioning update of even this magnitude, right? It's not. It's not enough. And certainly not enough to maintain the game. You know, I say, oh, don't criticize the multi-gazillion dollar company. But no, this is this is it, right? And listen, I'll, I'll say this now. Thank you, Eric Smith. Thank you, Eric Smith. And thank you to, I believe the other guy's name is Josh or Joshy. We have, we have the same first name, right? Like, thank you to these two guys who actually want to work on the game, right? It makes me happy, right? Because these guys go out of their way to work on the game. They don't have to. They don't even have to touch this game. The game runs autonomously. They don't have to do shit. But they still put updates into it. So thank you for what those two guys can muster in between whatever else it is they're working on. Like... That aside, you know, my mic gain is too loud. Like, I can't, I can't do anything about it. Like, it's, it's so, fuck it. Like, I can't, I can't do anything about the gain on this microphone. It sucks, I'm sorry, hold on. Let me see if I can do something about this. Scuff stream, scuff stream, scuff stream, yada, 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 shit in the bed, pissy, shitty, and crying. Where are you? Advanced audio properties. Where are my filters? Filters. Uh... We'll drop the gain to there? How does that sound? Does that sound good? Is that better? Is that better? Is that better? Is that good? Is that good? Is that better? That's good? Alright, we're good. We're, we're good. The gain is down, we're better. Anyway, where was I? I need my notes, otherwise I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna lose track. Need my notes, otherwise I'm gonna lose track. Uh, right. So I mean, <laughs> you know it's you know it's bad when um you know it's bad that when we get a broken update and people still like praise because like we're just so used to it, right? We're we're so used to getting broken shit that. Like, like, this is the norm, right? We're, we're so used to it that a broken update is of no surprise. It's, it's a bit crazy to me, right? And listen, yes, I know, I know this, right? I know that the internal structuring of Valve makes it so that people can choose what they want to work on. And that means less exotic projects like TF2 are going to fall to the wayside because no one wants to touch a 16-year-old game. Ergo, TF2 is still facing continued neglect and the same below bare minimum maintenance that we've received since 2018. That hasn't changed. It might not look like neglect right now because we have a bunch of new toys to play with, but nothing's changed. Nothing has changed about this game, guys, at all. This summer update was just another copy and paste job from the community workshop. And that's it. We just got a little bit more content than usual, right? Like, instead of just hats and unusual effects, we also got taunts and maps and skins, right? Just another copy and paste job. 
And unfortunately, like, they still haven't addressed the game's biggest issues. Like, we still have bots. I can't, like, I was going to give a lot more praise to Valve, but I tried to play the new maps last night. I, I can't play them. They're, they're flooded with bots. Again, I can't even enjoy the new, like, I can't even enjoy what's arguably the best part about this update because the, the maps are being flooded with bots still. Like, what the fuck? I can't even play the game. Ah, it's insanity. Like, it's like, it's, oh my god. And God forbid you try to queue up with more than five people, otherwise, good luck. Yeah, they they have to do a lot to really make TF2 more appealing in the eyes of their employees, and I really don't think a Source 2 port is going to happen, because, like, the way, the way TF2's code is structured is, like, if you can envision a stack of Jenga blocks, right, because I code for a living, and, um, or I, I shouldn't say I code for a living, but I do a lot of coding work for, for data analysis in my, in my geology work, so... At least the way I, a lot of people I know code is you can envision code like a stack of Jenga blocks, right? Like the main source code bits, like the, the, the engine is down here at the bottom, right? That's what's powering everything. And then everything else uh, in the game is layered on top of it, right? And in order to say fix something, they have to like slide a block out, tweak it, and then slide it back in. But if they pull it out improperly or place it back in improperly, the whole tower is going to collapse everything that's on top, right? It's going to cause a cascade of errors for everything that's stacked on top of it. And because TF2 is so old, that Jenga tower is huge, right? There's a lot of shit that can go wrong. And the blocks that are easy to slide out are hats and other shit because that's just adding more blocks on top of the existing pile and not adding new blocks into the middle of the tower, right? So, that's why no one wants to work on this game. And doing all of that from scratch would be a nightmare, and no one wants to tackle that project. I mean, some people are inside the community by doing, like, an entire Source 2 remake, but in terms of a professional capacity, it's, it's just not going to happen. It really isn't. It's, it's too much. Tyler keeps saying there's interest in, in TF2 at Valve due to how much money the update made. It'd be foolish to take that at face value. See, Richter... I hope, I really hope, right? I hope to God that this huge wave of like positivity, which means more money spent on the game. I really, really hope that that is giving more attention towards TF2. That would seem like the logical response at Valve, like, oh shit, this game's player count quadrupled overnight because of an update. That's insane, right? And that means a shitload of money is being spent on the game right now. So you'd think, oh, maybe we should give a little more attention towards this game because it's earning us a shitload of money. I hope that's the case, but hope is a very dangerous thing to have for this game, so I'm going to reserve that. I'm going to reserve that for when I actually see it happen, right? I'm not I'm not going to have hope for this update. And and no, I I don't feel pity for Valve. I don't I don't it's like it, but it, I will acknowledge that remaking tf2 from scratch is hard fucking work it's it's no one wants to do it and at a company where people don't where, where people choose what they want to work on they're not going to touch it and you know what's sad and what's sad about the player count too and this is something else that needs to be acknowledged because people really hyped up like oh my god tf2 has it, it reached all-time player count of over 250,000 players and that is insane but the reason why that happened is because this update has been hyped up for so long by a blog post and everyone talking about it that players returned in droves for this update. Shitloads of players, right? But most people, including myself, were older players, right? Like, oh shit, there's a new update for this game and everyone came back. But a lot of older players that I know almost immediately uninstalled because they were presented with yet another broken cash grab update with no meaningful fixes to the game's biggest problems right now. That's bots, that's cheaters. My god, cheaters are so bad right now. They're blatant. They're like even more blatant than they were the last time I said they were blatant. It's terrible. Uh, obviously optimization issues and the absolutely terrible game coordinator that can never seem to put me into a full game. Oh my god. You know? And also, no community fixes. Like, we, we got no significant community fixes, though apparently... Those are coming down the line at some point. I don't know when they're going to happen, nor in what capacity. We'll just have to wait and see whatever they do. But from what I've been told, this is what other people have told me. What I've been told is that, uh, and this is th these are emails from Eric Smith, is that the only way they're going to add a community fix is if they themselves can recode it from scratch. And that makes sense, security-wise. 
they don't want to adopt a block of code written by somebody else because that could introduce security problems. So naturally, they want to have to be able to remake it themselves, but that's going to significantly slow down what they accept and when they accept it, right? So community fixes are going to be a little slow trickle of whatever they decide to throw in. Hopefully more good stuff, but we'll see. Also, I'm getting trade offers, so I guess I'll look at those as they come in. Uh, thank you for sending me shit. Uh, Argo, don't TF trading, don't know what to do this. I think you'll make better use of it. Thanks, man. Uh, let me see what I have. I have multiple trade offers. Oh, hey, I have a factory new. That's probably about the summer update. I don't know if I want to. Ah. Yeah. Yeah, we got the, uh, the chaos that is the 100 man servers. This is fun. I think like th th this is fun. Like if you just want to engage in some raw chaos, go go dive into a 50 versus 50 server because holy fuck. I hope someone can figure out how to make it stable. But um this this is wild. This is awesome. <laughs> just like, just raw raw fucking chaos, man. Thank you for the uh the rescue ranger, man. I appreciate that. It's a cool skin. Thank you. Shonix got it stable. That's cool to hear. And uh, Argo gave me some keys. Thanks, dude. Oop, an error has occurred. Well, I'll I'll save that for later. We'll save that for later. We'll move on. Miss TF2 getting a battle royale. Shut up. Be quiet. I, I feel like I've missed donations. I'm sorry. I, I know I did. It, it's hard to keep up. Chat's going a mile a minute. Um. Anyway, so I guess I guess the concluding thought on like, my general thoughts on the update is, like, we've been fed garbage for so long that when Valve only slightly deviates from the status quo, everyone loses their minds. And I mean, yeah, it's a good thing. We got mostly good stuff, and, that, and like, that's fantastic. We should, we should be praising them for picking better stuff, but it's really not much more than what we already get, right? Like, this is now summertime Scream Fortress, you know? And that and that's all that promote that's all that promotional art means. We're like, like people saw that new promo art for the main menu or whatever, and people are, are hyping it up just the same as they did for when they did that for Smith Smith in 2019. You know? And it's like, oh, this is like this means that Valve cares about the game again. No, that, that this means nothing more than Valve treating Summer like another Scream Fortress. And I mean, yeah, it's more content, but eh. if you go to studio monetization supers you can keep up with donos easily uh thank you i'll i'll do it for next time i'm not, i am not fully versed in youtube streaming yet I'll, I'll i'll get better at it i'm i'm still kind of i'm still acclimating from from twitch because i just don't want to use twitch anymore twitch is fucking horrible uh granted they did just ban um csgo gambling so that's a big w as the kids say in my book so fuck you if you would promote gambling like that um but yeah that was nice to see Anyway, still getting my grasp on, on, on YouTube shit. Uh, okay, so maps. Shall we talk about the maps, guys? Ready? Let's do, let's do maps, okay? So, uh, general thoughts on the maps. Here's the Rescue Ranger. Nice. Uh, general thoughts on the maps. Most are pretty good. Uh, it's nice to see that we got, uh, like, a good handful of just non-holiday-themed maps that are, that actually play really nice like uh, and, and I was able to actually play on most of the maps before they were added to the game because I play on my friend Aaron's server every Thursday and we tried out pretty much everything that was added in the update and uh let's see here but I do want to say something I, I want to say something about the volume of maps that they put in this this is something that I was debating on making a video about but when I kind of sat down to write this, it I couldn't really get it more fleshed out into something that could be a video. So I'm just going to share it with you now. So th this is a scrapped video script for for all of you joining me right now. It's an exclusive an exclusive ears only script for you. Okay. So we got 14 maps, and initially that worried me because pretty much all the maps we've received since 2018 have been fucking terrible. Like they were terrible at worst to functional at best right minus a few exceptions we got we've received like pier and crasher is fun but most holiday maps are just really boring reskins they have terrible optimization several of them were made by amateur mappers we, something like whatville breadspace oh my god 
So initially, I was really worried about the new maps, but turns out, you know, they're all functional at worst to pretty good at best. So that's that's actually really nice to see. I'm really happy about that. But I, this might be a, a controversial take. Uh, so, like, just batting down the hatches. Um, we got too many. We got too many maps, and I really hope that this is a one-off deal. I hope that this volume of maps is a one-off deal, because right now, we're dealing with an oversaturation of content. And, uh, you want some Fempire? We'll do, we'll do Fempire for a bit. Alright, Scorch Shot. There you go. Actually, we'll do Third Degree there. Have some Fempire for you as we wait. Um, as we need something on the background. So, we got too many maps, I think. And, again, I hope this is a one-off deal, because we're dealing with an oversaturation of content. Let me explain, let me explain. So... Does TF2 have too many maps? Yes. Is it a problem? Technically, no. I'm not saying it's a problem, but TF2 does have too many maps. Can anyone guess right now? Can anyone guess how many maps are in TF2 right now? Just guess. Don't look at the wiki. Type a number in the chat. How many maps are in the game? I mean, the most of y'all are getting in the ballpark. I'm seeing a lot of around 100 to 200. Yeah, there are 161 maps in the game. 161 maps in the game, in total. But that includes man versus machine. That includes dead game modes like arena. That includes pastime. That includes manpower. But in terms of what's in the... And also all the holiday maps are locked behind holiday restrictions. But if you just look at the volume of maps in the game right now, there's about 80 of them in the active rotation. I didn't do an exact count, but 80 maps are in the active rotation. Might need to fact check me on this, but no other game has that many maps inside of an active rotation. That's a lot. And when you think about it this way, that's a, we have a relatively small volume of players being spread out across a fairly large volume of maps, right? And so what happens then? When people are presented with too many choices, most of them go ignored, right? That's just a fact of life, right? It's 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 this uh, it's it's that that mental thing when people have too many choices inside of the grocery store, they usually just keep going to whatever they're used to, and they don't pick new stuff, right? And so we have so many maps and not enough players to like spread out across the maps, and we have this kind of inherent reluctance to try new things, right? And as a result of that, we have a lot of maps that are good that no one plays on, right? Like, think of the last time you played on a CP Freight server, or, I li personally, I like Vanguard, maybe not, may not be that good to some, but, or maybe Probed, or Watergate, right? Or, or Cold Front. When was the last time you even played on those maps? How many of you, how many of you here even know that those maps existed? How many of you know what CP Cold Front is? Have you ever played on CP Cold Dude, someone said, what CP Freight? You don't know CP Freight? Okay, hold on. was it you don't know what freight is okay so i'm loading up freight and i want you to tell me right now how many of you have actually played on this map like that's a problem right we have so many good maps that go unplayed because people keep going back to the same small handful of maps which isn't necessarily a problem because you know most of the populated maps are relatively good but we have a lot of them that are just dead and this is partially why games like CSGO have a very small rotation of maps, because this results in all of their players being funneled into a small group of maps, so you don't have the problem of someone being plopped into a half-empty or an empty server playing a map that they want to play, but no one else wants to, right? So, does TF2 have too many maps? I say yes. Is it a problem? Technically, no. But, like, like seriously. CSV sheets... One. Like, how many of you how many of you played on this map before? Seriously, this is a fucking awesome map. This is CP Freight. I'm seeing people in chat saying they don't know this map. Oh, it hurts so much. Oh, it hurts. Oh, it hurts. It makes me feel old. Oh, I'm so old. Ah. Uh. Yeah, that's the, I mean, that's the nature of a 16-year-old game, is that there's going to be a lot of content in here that people don't know about, right? But this is one of my favorite maps in the game, but no one plays on it. 
no no community and, and when it comes to community servers let's face it uncle topia is the king right now when it comes to community servers and those servers run the same six maps over and over again if it's not upwater if it if, upwater if it's not upward or bad water or dust bowl or process or dust bowl or uh frontier not frontier um what's the, what's the other one I'm thinking of um fucking um shit anyways if, if it's not those same six maps then no one plays them right and and sunshine also uh steel as well right like uncle topia has this very small map pool and those servers have more influence than people think right and i notice this all the time maybe you guys notice this too that whenever you're inside of those maps right if it if it ever deviates from that same small pool then people almost immediately want to rtv back onto one of those maps they don't want to try something new they want to just keep playing on the same maps over and over and over again. And I have a theory as to why this might be. Let me see how this bounces off you guys. I suspect it might bounce a bit rough, but let me let me see let me let me see. All right, let me let me let me let me let me bounce this off you guys, right? So, I believe the reason why we're seeing people funneling themselves into a small pool of maps is because in the modern gaming space, right? In the modern gaming space, most people are kind of influenced by... I should say it's it's derivative of people being more accustomed to modern competitive-oriented gaming, right? That's my suspicion. I, I have it more... I have it more, more well-written in my notes here. Yeah. Yeah, so it's like... People have kind of been trained to only experience the same thing over and over again, right? And so they can keep getting better at it. That's the idea. Rather than people going out of their way to experience something new and unknown, which used to be the bread and butter for video game development, right? That was what fun kind of used to be in the video game space, right? You would jump into this unknown game, you would learn something new, you would beat it, and then you would move on to the next unknown area using the skills previously acquired in the last unknown area, right? That's how most video games are made. But that's long gone now, thanks to the whole, you know, proliferation of live service, cookie cutter, esport, dreck kind of becoming the norm, right? Exploration and trying things that are new out of whimsy and wonder is dead like no one wants to do that it's now been replaced with this repetitive easily marketable slop i'm not saying all gaming companies do this but it's certainly infinitely more prevalent than it ever has been before right and most people especially in the fps genre tend to fall into those types of games right and most people in the tf2 space right now are younger players right these are younger players who have been trained to kind of it's, they, it's hard to say this without like saying that because fun is subjective right but they've been trained to kind of only expect this repetitive competitive environment and that is fun for them right and so they don't want to try a new map they don't want to try a new layout they don't want to try new strategies they don't want to play a different class or in a different spot because they're used to playing in the exact same way in the same places using the same weapons and movement over and over again because deviating from that means that they're going to underperform so much pressure is put on winning rather than having fun and doing something else that people don't want to try something new for fear of it detracting from that victory right they seek out the most efficient means to win a meta and then only stick with that and that's why you have a severe underpopulation of a lot of maps and other content in tf2 right that's just that's just what i think about this that's my perception so you can you can agree or disagree but that's i feel like competitive gaming has a fairly negative impact on on trying new things because if they don't want to try something new for fear of it like oh i have to try this new thing when i can just do the same thing again and again and be good at the game right like like that's why people main a class right that's why people main a class oh yeah cp steel had changes we'll do that too map cp steel. we'll we'll show the steel changes because steel got changed as well so I'm seeing, a, I'm seeing a lot of people dissing Uncle Topia in the chat, good lord. Um, my experience on Uncle Topia is that it is effectively competitive light, and it is a tad over-moderated. It's actually very over-moderated. Um, but beyond that, it's okay. I mean, I prefer random bullet spread, and I prefer random crits on. 
and I think cl and, and class limits it is completely antithetical to how TF2 is meant to be played. Complete like it, it TF2 is meant to be played by people choosing what they want to play, doing what they want, however they want. That's when TF2 plays the best. And when you put a limit on that, it's not TF2 anymore, right? That's my opinion. Also, steel brush. Look at this shit. Oh, I love this skin so much. Good shit. When was the last time you saw a try-hard match of Gold Rush or Freight? Literally never. I just walked off a cliff because I wasn't paying attention. I have to wait for the round timer to stop anyway so I can go no clip. But yeah, so that that's my whole thing about the new maps. I hope they don't keep adding this many maps all at once because we're going to keep seeing a continued thinning of the player base across new maps and then, you know, I don't know. We're going to see an underpopulation of shit. And it's, it's already a problem because people don't try new things. It's a bit of a bummer. So I, I encourage you now, right now, if you're watching this and like you, you feel like you're in a bit of a rut with TF2, try something new. You know, play a new map. Use a new weapon. Do something different. I know they changed spawn. They, they, they've changed things. Like, this is new. This is this. So they open this up. This is a hallway now. So you can just come directly through here instead of having to deal with this sight line. Thank God. That was fucking annoying. But this is still a spam choke fest. So this doesn't really solve that problem. Uh, what else did they change? Oh, yeah. This is new. It's not a pit anymore. Yeah, this, this isn't so ass to push into anymore, because people can kind of hide in this nook and shoot down from here, so this is less annoying to deal with. This is about the same. What else did they change? I'm probably not going to be able to see all of the changes, because I just, like, memory will fail me. I'm, I'm going to miss shit. Yeah, this is new. This is different. Oh, whoa, they whoa, this is way different. What the fuck? Yeah, there's no door here anymore. It's over here now. Oh, this is gonna suck to deal with, dude. Fuck. Okay, I mean, it's, it's like a little bit easier to get over here and deal with engineers that build on this platform, but... Yeah, I mean, okay, is it... How long? That's not that long of a walk. Oh, God, yeah. This, this is still gonna be ass to push. Oh, Jesus. Uh, um... Granted, I have not played on Steel yet since it's been changed. This is just first impressions, but I feel like this is not going to improve this particular point. Uh, let's see. What else? What else? What else? What else have they changed? Is this the same? This looks the same. Yeah, this this is pretty much all the same. Anything else? Have I missed anything? Those are the biggest changes that I can see. Anything else? No, Valve, so this is weird. This is really bizarre. So Valve did not make these changes. Valve didn't make these changes. What happened is the creator of this map came back, they made a workshop page for this map, and they updated it, and Valve just accepted them. Valve's never really done this before. When it, initially, this, other mappers have told me this, right? I'm, I'm, not, pull, I'm not pulling this out of my ass. So other mappers have told me this. Back in the day, when it came to updating maps, Valve was very reluctant to doing significant layout changes. And they would only do, like, cosmetic things or fixing bugs or exploits. This is the first time that we've seen such significant layout changes to, I guess, what could be considered as a cla- Dog, chill! This is the first time we've seen, like, significant layout changes to, like, a classic map, right? And Valve just accepted them without question. So this is going to open the door to like other map like this now opens the door to the possibility of other maps getting updated by their creators when they can just come back and change shit. I kind of don't like that. I, I don't think we should be going back and doing significant layout changes to, to classic maps. It's kind of good that things kind of stay the way they are. Like minor tweaks here and there are fine. Like I'm not saying the changes here are bad, but I kind of fear that they'll do do more or too much i don't know it'll it remains to be seen but i'm kind of curious what that means for future map changes and what they're going to accept later on but who knows no yeah i'm not it's like the changes here aren't a bad thing it, and i hope again i hope whatever changes they opt to accept are minimal but i don't know i don't know i'm not sure we'll we'll see but yeah, this again. This opens the door to a, whole, a bunch of new. Oh, yeah, this opens the door to a bunch of new things being changed. Maybe we don't know. 
We just don't know. Mini house on B? Is this different? I don't know. Interesting. <laughs> yeah, this is different. Yeah. Like, if I can't immediately notice the changes, then they're not that impactful. Like, this is probably the, the biggest change that's going to impact gameplay. Like, like this right here. This is going to make this point slightly less ass to push. But we'll see. We'll see. Uh, okay, I think that's enough of looking at steel. Let's move on to the other stuff, because I don't want to spend the remaining of my time just talking about this map. Uh, okay, other maps. We have a lot of other maps to get through. Holy shit. So, my notes on all of the other maps. Shall we begin? Shall we begin? Yes, Fempyro, deal with it. Here, we'll, we'll, gi we'll give you the more classy variant. There we go. There you go. This is this is the classier version. You know, we'll 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 hit you with the taunt too. I'll hit you with the taunt. Let's do fucking There we go. Get the physics going. Cancel that taunt. There we go. We'll leave that on screen. Anyway. So Shark Bay. Shark Bay is easily the best map that they added in this update, hands down. It's 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 fucking great. In in terms of quality, in terms of gameplay. Shark Bay is the best map. Period. It's 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 like it's like an S tier map. Easily, it's fucking good. I'm I'm so glad they've added it. I've I've played it multiple times in the past. It is a phenomenal game. A phenomenal phenomenal map. All right, people are complaining about the Fempyro. I will remove it. Uh, okay, next Rotunda. Rotunda is interesting. I did promote this one. It's okay. It's it's structured very similarly to Nucleus. It's a little bit big in some spots. Like some of the... I'll, I guess I'll load up that one. Map. Koth. I'll load, I'll load up this one because this one has some... It's not great. It's not great. Reckoner is the best map of the update? No, Reckoner is probably one of the worst maps in the update. I'll explain why in a minute. But yeah, Rotunda does feel a bit big in some spots. It, I feel like if they scaled down the map by like 10%, then it would play a lot better. But a lot of the rooms and a lot of the like the travel times to like actually get to a fight is just way too big. It's way too long. It needs to be scaled down a bit. I guess my game is just not going to let me connect to my own game. Hello? Hello? Anyway, while that's loading in the background, uh, I'm gonna like, and I'll, I'll go ahead and rate Rotunda. We'll say it's like a, like a B tier. It's like a low B, nah, fine, not like high C tier. Rotunda's like high C tier. It's okay. It plays decently well, but it's just, eh. Uh, Phoenix. Okay, so I'm curious. In the chat, type one if you like Phoenix. Type zero if you don't like Phoenix. My opinion will not change based off of what people say, but I'm curious to see what the general response to the map is. Overwhelmingly positive. Okay. 0 0.5. Oh, that's, it's getting a little more mixed. It's getting a little more mixed. There we go. Yeah, like, if you look around, like... Some of these areas are just really big. Yeah, like, like, look how, like, th like these hallways are way too large. You have these big open rooms, right? If everything was, like, it's just such huge open areas. If, if everything was scaled down by, like, 10%, it'd be a lot better, in my opinion. But it plays okay. I like the verticality of it. I like that you can get up here and kind of jump over into the point. There's some interesting ways to play this map. So, it's, it's, it's pretty good. Anyway, uh, Phoenix, payload, map, payload, score, Phoenix. So, Phoenix, people are going to be mad. I don't like Phoenix. Let me tell you why. The map is beautiful, but it plays like shit. The map looks good, but it plays like absolute dick. Period. 
It has insanely bad choke points. It has huge, massive open areas with insane high ground on red team. The last point is fucking ridiculous. Holy shit, that is awful to play on, right? Phoenix feels like an Overwatch map. It plays like an Overwatch map. And uh, it kind of, you know, it, it just, it doesn't really, it, eh, right? Like, like, overly polished maps look a bit weird to me. They don't really like it like it's overly polished and like too saturated it doesn't really like look like this like at first glance that doesn't look like tf2 to me this map looks like it was taken out of some generic nameless fps and then thrown into the game like it's still rooted in tf2 style because like these are tf2's textures but i'm, I'm looking at an overwatch map this doesn't feel like dusty washed out decrepit tf2 right it doesn't feel like the game you know and I will say that this map is going to look really good in a portfolio sent to Epic Games. Like, hey, look what I can do. If I can do this for TF2, then I can do great stuff for your company. You know? But, like, this just, it doesn't really look like TF2 anymore. It's, it's a little bit too far out there. Too saturated. Just, ah, it doesn't, it doesn't quite mesh. And it plays like dick in a few spots. It's just, like... Like, this this area sucks. I fucking hate it. Where's the last point? This is all... Like, what were they thinking? What... What were they thinking? Seriously. With this... With this fucking awful last point. What were they thinking? I have to, like, navigate my way. Yeah, go ahead. I'm... I'm, I'm already lost and I cannot find my way. Here we go. Follow the train tracks if you cannot find your way. Here we go. Like, what were they thinking? Look at this. What the fuck? It's very obvious that this map was made to look good first and then play well third or fourth. You know, they, they like, if anyone was playtesting this, ah, uh, just like, just like, can you like, just put a sniper like right up there and have fun. Like, like put a 5,000 hour sniper main right up there, have fun. And, and like, and having everything funnel down into this one choke point, dude. Oh my god. Oh, it's so bad. Again, it's pretty. But uh, it doesn't really feel like TF2. It's like a low C tier. Low C tier map, and dare I say, uh, there were better choices than this one. There, there were better choices than this map that they could have picked, but they picked this one, so... Just my opinion. I have to say that now because if I say something is bad, then if I don't add the addendum, uh, if I don't, okay. So this is something else too. This is something I've noticed, and I'm sure some of you. Yeah, I can't talk. I'm getting ahead of myself because I speak too fast. So something I've noticed immediately is like over the like not immediately. Hold on, I have to like. I'm having a stroke. I can't get my train of thought. So here's the thing, right? I've been doing YouTube for since 2000. I've been doing this channel since 2016, right? I've been doing this channel since 2016. As and as I'm sure some of you here know that my my presence on the internet is is shrouded in controversy. I'm a tiny channel, you know, a, a vocal group of people fucking hate my guts, and I believe the reason for that is because I speak with authority. And people cannot stand it when someone speaks with authority. If someone conveys an idea or an observation or what have you with authority, a lot of people take that as an affront to themselves if they address, if they disagree with it, right? They see that as an attack on themselves because it violates what they think and you're expressing it sternly and you're forthcoming with the idea, right? And instead of softening that blow, instead of saying, oh, well, in my opinion, then I think it should be like this. Like, instead of kind of like toning myself down, and like mellowing the opinion, I just say what I think. And because I convey my opinions with confidence, because I believe with I believe what I'm saying, right? I believe I I know what I know what I observe. I'm confident in my opinions, I'm confident in what I think, but people take that confidence and they take that, you know, that authoritative expression of ideas as if as if though I think they're fact. No. Because like I say, apples suck. I fucking hate apples. Apples fucking suck. I will never eat an apple in my goddamn life. I fucking hate them, right? Obviously, that's an opinion. But because I've expressed it that way, people think I believe it's fact. No, that's just what I think about apples, right? But people want me to say 
Oh, well, App I don't think apples are very good. In my opinion, apples aren't very tasty. The way I convey it pisses people off, right? And that's with everybody. Like, this this isn't like, why are people politicizing this? Stop it. No, it's not like a fucking political thing. This is just normal for humans, right? Especially nowadays with social media kind of inundating, it, inundating people with this idea, right? Where speaking with authority is bad. Right? And when people convey an idea or an opinion strongly, that offends people, right? That, that's been a fact of humanity forever. It's, it's like a, it's a non-partisan thing. Why are people politicizing? It's so fucking stupid, right? But that's why I've gotten most of my heat. And also, I, I, I typed a few bad words a few years ago and people get really upset with that, so... God forbid. All of you've done shit on your own time that if it was shown to the internet, Ah, you'd be probably skinned alive. But because I have a following and you saw me do it, here we are. Anyways, that's Phoenix. Let's move on to Cashworks. Uh, Cashworks. Map PL Cashworks. Cashworks? Cashworks. I'm just running the I'm just running these in the order that I have them in my script, okay? So, Cashworks is the polar opposite of Phoenix. Cashworks is the... Uh, yeah, I know funny how, like, Uncle Dane can drop the hard R in a song. Not that it's a bad thing, it's a fucking song, right? Who cares? Like, he's, like, singing a song, right? And then Uncle Dane can, like, drop a hard R in the song and, like, no, no, you have to be held accountable for that. I don't know, silly. Anyway. Uh, Cashworks is the polar opposite of Phoenix. Cashworks is a community map that was made in 2008. This is an ancient map. Like, this map makes me feel 10 years younger playing on it. It's nuts. Like, it's, and the age of this map, it really does show. I will not deny that. It is, it is pure sightline hell. You have very, very questionable layout choices. And, oh god, it, it like, some areas are asked to play on, but, like, and, like, listen, the map is bad, the map is bad, but it's the soulful kind of bad. It's the correct kind of bad. It's bad like Dust Bowl is bad. It's bad like Gold Rush is bad. It is so fun to play on because it is bad. What other map has shit like this? Right? It is a soulful, fun map. It is awesome. Now, I've been playing this map for years. It And yes, the layout is shit in some spots, but it's just... This lives and breathes TF2. It's very comfy. I feel at home. It's very nostalgic. You can tell this came out of the era when people still had no idea how to make TF2 maps, right? So, hey, Mom, you're on camera right now. Say hello. Hi. <laughs> it's my mother, by the way. <laughs> you know my camera's on. You're fine, no worries. <laughs> well, why wouldn't it be on? People gotta see my face. At least I, at least I think people want to see my face. <laughs> so dumb. Uh, anyway, not you. The, I'm calling you dumb. Don't worry. Anyways, so like this map was made before like overly polished slop kind of became the norm, right? And now, like, things are overly polished and have to be perfect. This came out of an era when things didn't need to be perfect. And when things are kind of, like, visually and gameplay-wise experimental and fun. And this map, again, it just lives and breathes soul. And that's why I'm putting it in A tier. Because it's just a fun map. It doesn't feel like it was made to look good first and play well third. It's ass all around, but it's the correct kind of ass. And it is very fun. I love this map. I'm sorry. Uh, Venice, however... Venice. Oh. Uh, Venice. What the fuck? Was, like, okay, so. Venice. So, Venice is 100% pure, unadulterated trash that should have never been put in this game. Period. Venice should have never been put in TF2. At all. Why? You spend two minutes on this map and it's immediately self explanatory. It is horrifically designed terrible layout choices initially awful visuals 
they had a Hungarian flag instead of an Italian flag, but I mean, you turn the Hungarian flag sideways and it's, it's Italy anyway, so I can't fault them for that. Um, you have horrendous, beyond horrendous sniper sight lines, and it's just, it's just 100% pure amateur work. And you want to know why? You may not know this, but the creator of Venice has less than 60 hours in TF2. He's a CSGO mapper. Most of those hours that he spent in TF2 were likely making this map. And Valve picked this and put it in the game. That's why it looks and plays so terribly, because it was designed to look and behave like a CSGO map, because the person making this makes CSGO maps and has no experience in TF2. So yeah, that's why it looks and plays like a CSGO map. Like, I'm curious if someone would, like, load this into CSGO and see how it plays. Like, like, this, like, look at, like, like, sightline to sightline. Holy God, where do you go? And some of these, like, like, hello, oh, it's an empty room, okay. Like, and this flank is moderately pointless. That's not even a flank, it's just in a big empty room. Yeah, this map is this map is really bad. It needs it needs significant layout improvements before it's even remotely acceptable for TF2. It shouldn't have been added. This is one of the this is one of the few mistakes that Valve made in this update was putting this map in the game. It's it's honestly fucking terrible. It doesn't belong. It doesn't belong in the game. It doesn't look like a TF2 map. Doesn't the only the only way it plays like a TF2 map is because it's payload. Just it doesn't belong. It's shit. Sorry. Like, look at this, dude. Ah, everywhere you go is pain. Like, who thought this was fine? Who thought this was okay? Then jump over here. Can I get up here? You can. <laughs> it's so open. <laughs> My God. Ah, I, I, uh, wow. Like, look at this. You come out of here. These are insane sight lines. Oh my god. What the fuck? And not just for sniper. You can spam rockets across the map, flares, every like wrangle a sentry. It's it Jesus Christ. And and I played on this map. It plays I played on this map while it was still in development on a community server and it wasn't much different than it is now. It is awful. Awful. Yes, avoid the sight line when the whole map is a sight line. Yeah, it's a pretty pretty terrible map that should have been added. Ugh. Okay, next up is Reckoner. I don't like Reckoner. So, Reckoner is another fairly old map, and it was originally made for competitive sixes, competitive 6v6. And as a result, it suffers from all of the same problems that other competitive maps suffer from, in that it's not optimized for a 24-man experience. On this map, the most mobile classes dominate. It's dominated by Scout, Demoman, and Soldier, and Medic trails behind. That's why it plays fucking awful in a 24-man server, much like other 5CP maps, especially Process, because guess what, that one's also made for competitive TF2, made for 6v6 and not a 24-man server. It's still fun, but the map suffers from everything else that other 5CP maps suffer from. You have awful stalemates, awful sightlines, and if you're playing anything other than a class that can get around quickly, it's not very fun. Also, visually, it doesn't look anything like a TF2 map at all. Like... The bamboo is cool. I like this. Like, I'm, I'm a fan of, like, clean aesthetic. Clean aesthetic, but this this is not a TF2 map. Oh, God. Like, th this is another one that I don't think should have been added ever, and this is one of the maps that is going to very quickly die out once the update ends. Does, any, does anyone remember the Meme Spoon incident? Does anyone remember the Meme Spoon incident? I'm curious if people remember the meme spoon incident. I think I think some people know. What I, I think some people know what I'm talking about. You don't you don't remember the meme spoon incident? Hang on, hold on. I'll show you the meme spoon incident. You don't remember the meme spoon incident, dude? You don't remember this? Who here remember, who here watched Shy who here watched Sideshow back in the day? Anyone remember Sideshow? I love this guy, man. His streams were great. I fucking miss this guy. He went to Overwatch. And they're playing on Reckoner right now. 
This shit cracks me up every time, man. Well, how did he get behind? Don't worry, though, because I'm just going to clean up. <gasps> oh, shit. Oh. How does this happen? I fucking... I just went to your to see that. Oh, God. Does something like that happen? It gets better. Like, why is he doing a skip jump there? How is it perfectly timed so that he gets into me? There's that no way that you saw me go into that position. He was. I love this shit, man. I need to leave this game. It's the, I need to leave this game. It's the meme spoon incident. I'm, I'm glad some of you guys remember this shit. Six years ago. Oh, God. How time flies. Uh, anyways, Reckoner. Eh. It's, I think it's just another map we could have done without. It, it's just... Mm. It's, not, it's another 5 CP map that I don't think is going to see a lot of action, and it's really only kind of familiar with competitive players, and it's going to remain competitive. It's going to remain familiar with competitive players, and I don't think people are really ever going to go out of their way to play on this one. I could be wrong, but... Don't see a lot of high praises for this one. It's like low C tier, kind of D tier. Like, I, I played on this map several times back in my day, but just, eh. Eh. Uh, Sulfur. Oh god, there's still so much more to go. Uh, uh. Sulfur. I've not played on Sulfur yet. Or maybe I have. I need to, I need to jog my memory because I don't remember how it looks. I need to check. Dude, I've been playing this game since 2010. Oh my god. I played the game originally on the orange box at launch at a friend's house. And then I stopped playing until I got most of the way through high school. And then I picked it up again in 2010. And then I started YouTube in 2012 when I was a freshman in college. And now I'm 29. Ugh. I'm getting old. Getting old. Should have done Hydro. Real shit meme map. Ah, Hydro's okay. Except for starting the YouTube channel. Yeah. I like I like seeing us I like seeing us old timers around. Whoa! These are again more visuals that are whoa, this is okay, again, I like the clean, polished aesthetic, but it's just really not for TF2. The map looks cool. Oh. Hmm. I have not played on this one before. Okay, that's pretty. Who's Fuji-san? Oh, look. Fuji-san. Hello. Hello, Mount Fuji. Yes, they call Mount Fuji Fuji-san in Japan. And yes, I'm going to be that guy. Why? Because I've been there. And I was... I don't know. I, I, the reason why I address Fuji as Fuji-san is because when I went to Japan, I was... I was, I wouldn't say ridiculed, but I was kind of, I was corrected that I need to respect, I need to respect the mountain, so I have to refer to it as Fujisan, by a local, so now as like, <laughs> I just do it out of fucking instinct now. This is pretty. It just doesn't really feel like a TF2 map, doesn't look like one either. Kind of big, oh god. Kind of a confusing layout. I mean, the signs are somewhat useful, but it needs more directional arrows for sure. Like, there's one. Oh god, this is gonna be- this is so ass to cap, man. Oh, look at this. Holy fuck. You just get attacked from all sides. There's no- there's no cover. What do you do? You can run in here. Oh, you can get up here. Okay. Alright. I haven't played- okay, I have not played on this map, so I need to see how it- how it feels, but it feels- okay, yeah. There's a spawn right here. You put a sniper up here. You're done. Okay. Oh. Find C? Okay, that's A. I'll see if I can find... I'm back at A again. Where's point C? Is there a sign? This is D. Is it over here? Oh, this is the spawn. What? Hold on. Let me, let me no clip. Get around more quickly. Uh, you've missed a lot, uh, Arthur. You've, you, you're Arthur. You've, you've missed, you missed quite. Here's C. What the fuck? It's so out of the way. Why? It's like, it's like tucked into a corner. Hold on. Like, yeah, it's like, it's like tucked into a corner all the way, like, all the way out of the way. Is this a road? 
What? Why is it so far? That's not really good. It's like this this whole unnecessary massive open area on the side here. Ah, uh, that's a questionable layout choice. Yeah, I I can I can immediately see some problems with this map. It's kind of suffering from what uh fucking Rotunda suffers from, where if they kind of scaled down everything by like five to ten percent, it would look a little bit better. I'm not sure. You should play sulfur, maybe. You need to cap A and B before you can cap C, and then the route opens. Okay, so at least it kind of funnels players in the right direction. Oh, so it plays like steel. Okay, that's nice. Oh, so they're not all open at once, like, um... Uh, oh god, what's that other map that no one plays on that's also dead, that no one likes, because it does kind of play like dick. Okay, so it plays like steel. Okay. Slightly higher opinion of it now. Slightly higher opinion if it plays like steel. That's nice. Stand-in, thank you. I could not remember the name of that map. Yes, yeah, CP stand-in. Neat. All right. Yeah, I got to play on this. Let's see how see how it behaves. Uh, hardwood. Okay, I'm, I'm. Do I need to look at each one? Can I just like get my thoughts? I'm I'm getting kind of like my my throat's getting burned out here. I have a lot I have a lot more shit to get through. Uh, quick thoughts on hardwood. CP hardwood. It's a really fun map. Um, it's you know it's nice to see another attack defense style map put in the game. It plays well. Uh, looks like a TFT map. It's it's just nice. It's just a, it's it's a, yeah. Hardwood is above average. Hardwood is above average. I do like it. Uh, Pelican Peak. I've not have I played Pelican Peak. Uh, it's capture the flag, right? I've not seen this one. Maybe I need to check. As that's loading. Uh, Selbien, the Selbien Seal map. I will say this. It's really nice that we finally have another player destruction map that is not locked behind a holiday restriction. It's it's the first player destruction map that we've received since 2015. Because the last one was fucking um, Watergate. And all the other ones we've received are either a Halloween or Christmas themed. The only good one being Pit of Death. And also the Frankenstein one that I can't remember. The Christmas, the Christmas ones suck. Those are not fun. Yeah, those are the only other two player destruction maps that are fun, but they're locked behind a holiday restriction, so you only get to play them for a month out of the year, and that's fucking annoying. Monster Bash, thank you. Zesta, you are awesome. You are also awesome, random citizen. Thank you. Uh, yeah. So, Pelican Peak. Have I played this? Okay, so this looks like a TF2 map, to an extent. It's like a big, long hallway. Oh, dear. And the intel's up here. Interesting. Oh, God. This is... Ooh. I can... Ooh. I can... S mm. I don't know if I like this. I don't know if I like it. It's like a big, long, snaking hallway leading to a big room. Uh, I'm not... I'm not feeling this one. I haven't played on it, but... Don't think it's gonna play really well. It looks nice, though. Like, like it's nice to see some, like, the old, you know, decals and shit for TF2 thrown around. I like these lanterns. The lanterns are a nice touch. Like, I feel like people don't utilize enough, like, TF2-esque lighting like this. This looks nice. Like, it takes place at dusk. We, we need more maps that happen at nighttime and at dusk. Looks good. Yeah, this is like a big... Oh, no, I have played this before. Yeah, yeah, I have played this before. It's coming back to me. Yes, because I remember this fucking room. This room is AIDS, dude. Oh, man, you put it like, Devil Man, all he has to do is like spam in this room and you, you just can do nothing. This room is awful. I have played on this. And it was fun. Yeah, okay. It did like the, the, the long snaking hallway nature of it does get annoying after a while. But yeah, this map isn't terrible. Like there, there are worse capture the flag maps. There are worse capture the flag maps. This one plays decently well. What's up? And now my dad's in the background. You'll probably see him now. There is a camera on. Well, you're just getting some, so it's okay. Yes, I'm visiting my parents. But yeah, this map's fun. Good shit. We have taken the enemy. I approve. Uh, Selbien. Selbien seal map. Map. Uh, PD Selbian. What, I can't call my dad daddy? 
The, oh, oh, right, of course, because the word daddy has been bastardized by ethos, of course. Can't say daddy anymore. Can't say daddy without people's minds going to a dark place. I'm so sorry. God. So stupid. Uh, Selbien. Selbien is, is good. Selbien is fun. The layout is a little bit screwy. It's like, once you get used to it, it's, you know, it's okay. There are still some really, really, really bad sniper sight lines. It's horrible. But it's, it's like, it's fun all around. Like, it's fun. It's passable. I enjoy it. I was playing on it last night, and it was a lot of fun. But I'll show you the only glaring flaw with this map. Right here. Yeah, pop a sniper right here. No one can see him, and he just dominates this whole area. Actually, better yet, put him up here, because I was dealing with that last night. You put him up here, shuts down the whole game. Yeah, that sucks. Like, you have a sight line through there, got a sight line through there. Then you move over here slightly, you got a sight line throughout the whole cap area. Ugh. And also, yeah, the spawn camping nature of this map can get really annoying. Because you can just, like, come down. You, like, you have this nice little corner to hide behind. You can spam right up into their spawn. That sucks. There are a lot of corners to play around, and that can be fun. Like, this is a fun heavy map, I noticed. You put a sentry here. Like, putting a sentry here, for some reason, is awful to deal with. I don't know why. But yeah, snipe, like, the, the, the multi-thousand sniper mains do absolutely ruin this map, as they do with every other map. But this map facilitates them, which just makes it worse. So, yeah. Can I also address something that's really funny? I like how it's a more... I won't say unanimously accepted notion, but it's a more widely accepted notion that Sniper does need a nerf in some capacity. And the amount of shit that I got for saying that, even just a year ago, a couple years ago, is wild. Because now, it's like, okay to say that for some reason? I wonder why that is. People say, like, oh, because bots are in the game now, which just shows how awful Sniper can be. But then, I think what it took is because, oh, look, there's a bot, and then when you come across a 5,000-hour Sniper main, playing against a bot and a 5,000-hour Sniper main is effectively no different gameplay-wise. There's almost nothing you can do. You can't engage. You can't, you can't do anything. If he can see you, you're just dead. So, I think that's what it took, and now more people are warming up to the idea of, oh yeah, maybe there's something wrong with the fact that there's only one long-range insta-kill class in a game where every other class is strong at medium to close range, made so by things like damage fall-off and random bullet spread, or bullet spread in general, or slower projectile speed, right? But no, Sniper's totally fine in this game, where he can stand all the way behind his team line and pick off players without ever having to engage with the fight. And with nothing that makes him weaker at close range, aside from his health. Hmm. Yeah. Totally nothing wrong with that class in this game. But, you dare express that, someone's gonna clip this right now and then make a big stink about it on Twitter. Guarantee it. I say in about, I say in about 30 minutes. In about 30 minutes, you're gonna see someone clip this part of the stream and then make a big stink about it on Twitter. Guarantee it. Watch. Because whenever I say something, it's bad. But whenever, else, whenever someone else says it, it's okay. Anyway, uh, yeah, map's good. I like Selbien. However, I'm a little tired of the seal memes, like I said earlier, so... Yeah. Okay, that, that's, that takes care of Selbien. So... Can I just say something? Like, Twitter changing its name to X is just so dumb. It's, it's like... It's, it's worse than Dunkin' Donuts changing its name to Dunkin'. It's like Dunkin' Donuts changing its name to Tire Iron or something like that. No one's gonna call it X. Everyone's gonna call it Twitter. Like, like the, the name's not gonna stick. It, it's, it's an established brand and no one's gonna call it Twitter. It's, it's just a really stupid idea from a marketing standpoint. I, I don't get it. Like, I understand Elon wants to kind of, you know have all of his names be under the same brand. You have, like, SpaceX, X, uh, Tesla X, I guess. I don't know. But I, I, I find it really stupid. Yeah, and I know the whole thing of him wanting to call PayPal X as well. That was a bit dumb. Like, I understand he's wanting to put it under all the same brand, but it, it has the staying power 
of that name and it, it shouldn't have changed. But what's funny is like people are so hopelessly addicted to Twitter that the first thing they do when Twitter does something bad is they just go back to Twitter and complain about it. Instead of moving on to greener pastures, they stay. But then again, what alternatives do we have? Facebook tried that and it died in a week. Remember, remember that? Like Facebook had threads or whatever it was called? It's dead already. They lost 80% of their user base already. Because if you're going to introduce a, com like a, um, a competitor to Twitter, you can't introduce a competitor to Twitter that has half of Twitter's functions. That's not going to work. Right? So, no one's really made a Twitter alternative that is, I, I guess, better? But then again, is there gonna is there ever gonna be a Twitter alternative that is better? Because Twitter is a fucking cesspool. I've long since stopped using it. I have someone else tweet for me because I just don't want to look at it. I'm I'm so fucking over everything with it. It's awful. Super dead, and they cheated by using Instagram's user instantly getting threads. See, yeah, that too. They hyper they Facebook or, or Meta, whatever the company is, artificially inflated the number of people using it by just automatically signing up every Instagram user for threads. It was something that was dead on arrival. And yes, I will say that Twitter gets, or sorry, life gets infinitely better when you're not using Twitter. Trust me, it's awful. Because the, uh, the incentive to, what's the word? The incentive to dogpile and the incentive to morally grandstand is so heavily rewarded, no matter what it is, that people will just do awful shit without thinking. And it's totally fine. You know? It's just really stupid, and that's why and that's why I've stopped using Twitter. I only have an alternative account, so I can look at art, and so I can commission people, because I like commissioning art of my character, and that's all I use Twitter for now. I look at cats, I look at memes, and I look at boobs, and that's it. I don't look at anything related to politics or TF2 or video games, just those three things. I have heavily curated my timeline, so that's all I see, because I just do not give a shit anymore. <laughs> Uh, should I talk about Versus Saxon Hale next? Yeah, I think I need to. So, Versus Saxon Hale. Alright, let let, let's talk about that next. Versus Saxon Hale, okay? Versus Saxon Hale... Do you guys mind if I read my script off of this? Because I, I want to I say this correctly. Otherwise, I, I fear people are going to misconstrue what I'm saying. So, I, I have to read directly off this for a moment. Just so I, like, make sure I don't fuck up. Okay. I like I wrote all of this down because I wanna I, I wanted to like convey these ideas, but I don't wanna I don't wanna screw up by doing it off the cuff. Okay, so So first of all, versus Saxon Hale, right? The the launch of versus Saxon Hale was a fucking shit show. It took them over a week to get it working, which is fucking awful. And Valve likely didn't even expect to need to perform work on versus Saxon Hale until it broke. Because again, everything's everything's a copy and paste job for Valve, right? And when it busted, they like should we this much shit. Now we have to fix this. There's a lot of, I guess, misinformation floating around as to why versus Saxon Hale didn't work. Some people were saying that, like, oh, Vscript wasn't enabled in casual, which is simply not true. The reason why versus Saxon Hale broke is because Vscript was conflicting with casual, right? So what Vscript does. Vscript forces Saxon Hale to be on his own team, but then the casuals game coordinator said, no, teams must be equally sized. And so then Vscript and the coordinator proceed to force players on and off Saxton's team to try to make team sizes equal, but then make Saxton alone. And so you get an infinite loop and then the server crashes. So that's why versus Saxton Hale was originally broken and Valve had no idea why it was doing this on launch and it took them a week to fix it. So that was why it broke. And mappers, have, other mappers who got stuff in the game told me this, because they have direct communication with Valve via email, and they reached out to me and told me about this. So, yeah. So, when it comes to Versus Saxon Hale, I have played Versus Saxon Hale before. I've played both the Vscript version, but also the community server versions. And I will say that both of them are fun in their own right. Both versions of Versus Saxon Hale are fun. I need to say that first, because I... I'm probably going to get a lot of shit. I'm going to get a lot of shit for saying this. I know for a fact that I'll get crucified for saying this, but Versus Saxon Hale is not appropriate for vanilla TF2. 
I don't think it is. Versus Saxon Hail is not appropriate for vanilla TF2. Versus Saxon Hail. Let me explain why. Let me explain why. Okay. Let me explain why. VSH has always had its home on on community servers, right? It's always had its home on community servers as this this wacky custom game mode, and I don't think it needed to be added in any official capacity, right? The addition of Versus Saxon Hail is very eerily reminiscent to Valve adding competitive sixes to TF2, and I'm not I'm not equating these things. I'm, I'm not saying they're the same. Valve bending the knee to competitive gaming with Meet Your Match is something we'll never recover from. And I will say that Versus Saxon Hail is way more appropriate for vanilla TF2 than anything that resembles a competitive version of this game, right? Let me explain, right? I don't think Versus Saxon Hail is appropriate for vanilla TF2 because it deviates so far away from the vanilla game that people do come for, right? Versus Saxon Hail is another homebrew version of TF2 that's over that's only ever really appealed to a small minority of players, despite it existing for nearly as long as TF2 has, right? It's been well known in the community for years, and thrusting it into everyone's faces, even new players who've had no idea what it is, really isn't gonna change that. And again, because it deviates so far away from the vanilla game that it's now a different game, right? It's not the game that most people come for. Versus Saxon Hail is similar to the other two gimmicky PvP game modes that we got of Pastime and Manpower, which were made by individuals that wanted to make a new game, but they, they didn't want to start from scratch. So they just used TF2 as a base for their ideas, right? And they're fun, don't get me wrong, I'll say it again. Versus Saxon Hail is fun. So is Pastime, and so is Manpower. But they're a novelty and once the novelty wears off then people are just going to go back to the vanilla game and that's kind of it right pastime and manpower are fucking dead and they also have comp they also have different balancing like versus saxon hail right it's it, they're fun but they're too wacky it's it's not tf2 they're not for me and i feel like a lot of people think the same and i fully suspect that versus saxon hail is going to die very quickly at least the official version in the game right and why is that versus saxon hail was birthed inside of community servers right it was curated by the community controlled by the community and placing it inside of official tf2 now relinquishes that control over to i think the one or two people that made these maps and have them in the game and also valve right and now we're at the mercy of whatever these guys want to do and whenever Valve decides to push an update, right? It's no longer in the hands of the community. And that's part of its charm, in my opinion. That's part of its charm that the community's always had control of this own little sphere, but now it's going to exist as a separate sphere inside of the vanilla game. And it's not even the same game in community servers, right? Vscript versus Saxon Hale has completely different balancing than the community server versions. It's kind of a version that no one asked for, just like competitive 6v6. And again, it's a fun novelty for a time, but then it's gonna die. At least I think it will very quickly, right? It's a watered down version of the official mainstay community server versions with different balancing that hardcore fans of versus Saxon Hale are just gonna go back to after they've had their fun with the vanilla version, right? It's already so well established that and it's made for themselves and people aren't going to go to it. They're, they're going to, yeah, they're going to stick with the community server versions in my opinion, right? And I really don't understand why they decided to huck it into the vanilla game now. Like we already know that people are going to go back to Freak Fortress, right? It's really weird. That's why I think it was inappropriate for, for putting it in the official game. I don't know. If you like it, that's fine. But I, I really suspect that Versus Saxon Hail in TF2 is going to die. It's going to suffer the same fate that Player Destruction is. It's going to suffer the same fate that Medieval Mode has. The same fate that Pastime and Manpower have. People are going to enjoy the novelty of it and then go back to the vanilla game. And that's it. People are enjoying it now because it's being thrust in their faces and it's the first thing they see when they turn on the game. But then after the summer update's over, I think it's going to die off. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see if that actually happens. I'm not sure.
it's mainly inappropriate about it to me is it's being built on a completely different framework than the rest of the game modes. Yeah, that's exactly right. Like, it's it's no longer red team versus blue team. It's everyone a against a boss, right? It's not it's it's not TF2 anymore. It's all the same mercs. It's all the same weapons. But now it's not it's not it's not TF2 anymore. And again, it's a fun thing, but it's gonna die. And also, MVM is effectively dead as well. No one plays MVM anymore. The only time people opt to go out of the way to play MVM is whenever the community hosts these, like, big events. But even then, they tend to remain fairly underpopulated because it's like, oh yeah, I've kind of had my fill of MVM. I certainly don't want to go out of my way to play MVM anymore. Because it's just kind of all the same. And then it gets way too wacky and way too gimmicky when you go to a community server version. It's like, 50 Demo Knights! with the, the toy sheep, but they have wings and fly around. It's like, I don't really want to engage in that. I just like the vanilla game. I'm going to keep going back to it, right? You, you feel free to enjoy it. Like, if you enjoy it, then by all means. But I just don't think it was a good choice to put it in the official game. We'll see. I don't know. Also, can I say this, too? Can I say that it's kind of sad that um, it's actually really depressing how Valve delivered versus Saxon Hale? Like, Versus Saxon Hale is probably the most exciting part of, of the update that we got, but it was handled so poorly. Oh my god, it was handled so poorly. Like, VSH hand relies on a lot of custom balancing, right? There's a lot of custom balancing, it's an entirely new game mode, and it needs all of this in order to function properly, right? You don't really feel the changes, right? The game mode is straightforward, you, like, you shoot Saxon, you don't die. But Valve just tossed it into the game with no rhyme, no reason, or even like a little bit of fanfare. It's like, hey, this is the first new game mode we've added since 2014, with one of TF2's most iconic characters at the forefront, right? And we got nothing. We got no explanations. We got no guides. We didn't even get a list of balance changes in the patch notes that explain what they what's different in the game mode, right? We got nothing. People just go in. It's like, okay, have fun. Uh, what's different? Why why is the heavy do no damage now? Wait, you, I can climb walls? Why does Demo Man's shield break? It's like, what? what is all this? It's very annoying. It was a very lackluster addition. It kind of just, it's, it's kind of limped into the game. And it was broken for the first week. So, I, I don't know, man. Also, can, the voice lines? Oh my god, the voice lines. So, the voice lines in Versus Saxon Hale were not from a professional voice actor. They were from an impersonator, right? And a lot of them sound really out of touch with the game. A lot of them also sound bad, too. It's like, you have really, like, like I, you can tell someone on Reddit wrote these. Like, oh, it's like, we're some kind of Team Fortress. Oh, my God. Oh, they're, they're really out of touch. They're really bad. And, like, I'm not, I'm, I'm not shitting on the impersonator. He was paid to do it. And he did his best. Like, he was paid to say that, right? And... I don't think these voice lines were ever meant to be an official addition to the game, but now they're in and they just sound really out of place. And it draws yet another really uncanny parallel with competitive TF2, where you have other voice lines that like don't fit. Like Demo Man saying, I just watched their scrim. What the fuck does scrim mean? I have no idea what this word is. Who wants pocket? The fuck is a pocket, right? It's so weird, it's, it's eerie. How similar the addition of Versus Saxon Hell is like mirroring what they did for competitive. It's fucking weird. And it's and no, it's like the reason why the voice lines are as goofy as they are is because it was made by the community. They can do whatever the fuck they want. But then Valve took it and put it in the game. So ah. It, it sucks, right? Because Valve could have gotten the official voice actors, they could have done more. Like this could have had so much more polish. It could have had infinitely more polish, but they just tossed it in the game, and that was it. So it's it's honestly a pretty big flop. It's a big like adding VSH is a pretty big flop. They could have done better, but they didn't because that's all that two pairs of hands can muster. That's all two pairs of hands working on TF2 part time part time can do. All they can do is copy and paste shit off a community workshop, and that's it. They can't go out of their way to get voice actors. They're not going to do any writing. They're not going to give any polish. They're not going to do a blog post. They're not going to explain shit. They're just going to throw it in the game. Because again, that's all two pairs of hands can muster for a game of this magnitude. Sucks. All right, that's my, that's my spiel. That's my spiel. Also, now, now watch as people take all of this out of context and say, 
Oh, Zesty hates Saxton Hale. He think he, he should have never. It's he thinks it's a horrible thing. He wants all versus Saxton Hale players to burn. No, I just I. It's fun. I'll say it again, but I don't. I don't think it's appropriate. I just don't think it should have been put in the game. Or if they did put it in the game, they should have handled it a lot better. Then maybe it would have been a bit more of a seamless transition, and like people could have had a better understanding. Because like, think about it this way, right? Most people playing TF2 right now started playing within the past three years. This is a statistical fact that a majority of TF2 players started playing after the year of 2017, most within the past few years, right? Most people playing TF2 probably don't even know who Ver don't even know who Saxton Hill is. So now we have this big buff Australian guy flying around and punching people in the mouth? Uh, who? You know? So. Again, it's weird. There's no fanfare, no no nothing, no blog post, no no like there's like I was I was expecting like a little tongue in cheek blog post blurb, right? It's like like everyone's favorite uh everyone's favorite CEO is coming on the scene, he's gonna beat the shit out of you. Like something like something classic like that, right? But no, we got we got none of that. So it's it's a bummer. It sucks. It does. But hey, if, if you like it, have fun with it. Have fun with it while you can, because I think it's gonna die. I, I think versus Saxon Hill in the in casual is going to die very soon. It's, or not very soon, but as soon as the update is over and they stop thrusting into everyone's faces, the volume of players in versus Saxon Hill is gonna completely die out. And it's just gonna become another pool of maps that is just dominated by bots. Because when there's no players, there's only bots. So yeah. Sucks. Also. I suspect that Valve wanted to add something similar to a holiday boss because now it seems like they're going to treat Summer like a second Scream Fortress. So they wanted to have like another boss thing going on. And that strikes a little bit of fear into me that they might lock versus Saxton Hale behind a holiday restriction. I really hope they don't do that. That might help it because if it's like a limited time thing, it's like, oh yeah, get in and play it while you can. It's going to go away. Like, fear of missing out and all that jazz, but we really don't need more content locked behind a holiday wall. Please don't do that, Valve. Please, please don't. Just don't do that. Just let let this stay in the game. Give us that much, please. Give us that much. Don't don't lock any more shit behind holiday walls. Yeah, let let maps stay, goddammit. Let them let stay. Who knows? Okay, now for the part people are probably the most interested in. And that's the cosmetics. Because I know people like my workshop reviews, so let's get to that. No, yeah, maps are oversaturating the game. And like I said earlier, it's not a problem. And it's good that we have more choices, but it's also unfortunate that people keep going back to the shit they're used to and not trying new things out. But I also really hate content being locked behind a limited time wall and not always leaving it in the game because it's just another marketing ploy to kind of instill fear of missing out on the people to spend more money and engage with your product instead of just letting them have access to it all the time whenever they want. And you have to go out of your way to community service to do that. I don't like holiday restrictions. It's fucking stupid. It's okay for like Halloween and Smithsmiths because it's inappropriate for like Halloween and Christmas themed things to be available year round. But that kind of fell out the window when they stopped locking certain cosmetics behind a holiday restriction. So it's like, fuck it. Just let everything else be available now. So. Yeah, I, could, I would be totally fine with Scream Fortress maps being available during the full moon. I don't see why not. Be fun. Do I think they should remove bad maps? I think they should remove a lot of things, but they're never going to do that because there's money attached to it. And they'll never do that. Because if it earns them money, it's not going to go away. Uh, okay, so. So, 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 so. Uh, I'm going to take a quick break. I need something to drink. My throat is hoarse because I've been talking for an hour and 45 minutes straight. I'm going to get a beverage. I'm going to piss. And then I'll talk about what people actually want me to talk about. And that's, you know. Oh, yeah, Ricker. That's something else, too. Like, when it, when it comes to the overpopulation of, or the oversaturation of maps thing is... um. At least for Halloween, we have contracts, right? We have contracts that, like, give people an incentive to play on the new maps. But we don't have that for Smithsmiths, and we don't have that for everything else. 
So as a result, most of them go dead. But at least during Scream Fortress, all the maps have players because people want to get their contracts. They want to get their free shit. So anyways, I'll be right back. Okay, and we're back. And we are back. I have a lot of Steam notifications. What the hell is going on? All right. Desktop. Hey, so I got a question. Why is my camera so far? So I got a question for y'all. Do y'all know what these are? Have y'all ever had these? These little, these little fruit jelly slices? I fucking love these. So good. So good. So, where do I get them? So, um, I was vacationing in, uh, in Port Aransas, Texas. It's on an island on the Gulf Coast of Texas. And, uh, they have a candy store there that sells a lot of, like, old-timey classic candy. So they have, like, saltwater taffy and a bunch of, like, in-bulk chocolate and cordials and a bunch of old candy and what have you. And they got bins of these big jelly slices with a bunch of flavors. Like, this is classic watermelon flavor. Like, this one is key lime. This one is grape. So. Good shit. There's my cat. You're a little shit, you know that, right? Hey. Hey. She's a little shit. What are you doing? I like grape flavor, too. Anyways, cosmetics. Let's begin. What are you doing? Oh, you want my jelly slices? What do you want my jelly slices? I'm gonna finish my snack here. Hi, so I'm gonna I'm gonna finish my slices. How y'all doing? Everyone doing all right? Everyone doing okay today? I think I asked that earlier, but I didn't see. Hope everyone's doing good. How's y'all summer been? Been good, been decent, it's good. Dude, Joey, man, this fucking heat is kicking my ass. What, you're Texan? Dude, you're from Texas? Hell yeah, brother. What's up, man? Yeah, dude, not dude. So I I'm in San Antonio. It's fucking hot. It's hot as shit. It sucks. 107? Uh-uh, dude. This is awful. It is not fun. Dude, my apartment's in Austin. That's fucking funny. Small world. That's a small world, man. Anyway, yeah, it's fucking hot. It's fucking hot, dude. 107 degrees. It sucks. That's why I'm in here right now. I'm next to an air conditioner because it's like I can't be in any other part of the house because the AC cannot keep up. Small world, but a big state. Yes, sir. Yeah, it's pretty bad. Like the heat index, like so when I was in Port Aransas in the Corpus Christi area, the heat index was getting up to like 120, 122. 122 is insane. That was hot as shit.
Yeah, this is going to be archived, don't worry. I'll upload the VOD on my second channel. So if you guys missed anything, it'll be, it'll be on my second channel. So no worries. I got one more. Good shit. See, I like winter too. That's why I live in Texas, because I hate the cold. If it's too cold, it sucks. I hate snow, I hate ice, so I live in Texas. I don't like it. There's a lot of jelly, hold on. Hmm. Dude, yeah, you're seeing you're in Houston, so you're getting all the the coastal humidity. That sucks. Echo, you're sitting on my mouse pad. Um, I've never used Opera GX. I I, I don't like. I don't care that much. Like, I, I have 128 gigabytes of memory. I don't care what browser I use. It, it doesn't bother me at all. Like, I, I can have, like, 90 Chrome tabs open and they won't even knock a dent. I'm good. She's not letting me stream. <laughs> Fucking Echo, what are you doing? Uh, I swear. She gets she gets plenty of pets, don't worry. She does. Uh, PC Specs, I am running a uh, 3070, 128 gigabytes of RAM. Oh, uh, I don't remember my processor. It's an AMD something. 8600? Might have the number wrong. Water cooled. All that jazz. I bought it pre-built because I, I got it during the pandemic when you couldn't find a graphics card for a good price. So it's like you could either buy a graphics card for the price of a pre-built or buy a pre-built so i got a pre-built so and i had the money at the time so it's like fuck it i'll do it and i needed and i really needed a new computer because my current machine was dying and i, I just could not render videos without like choking to death so I, I i needed to get a new machine so and also like the amount of memory also helps for work because i do a lot of coding and a lot of data processing so having 128 gigabytes of ram is very important yeah because i do i do a lot of big data analysis because i do i do signal processing for earthquakes and so I need a lot of memory to kind of throw at it. Also a good processor, so good stuff. Okay, uh, let's do taunts first, right? We'll do taunts. We'll get taunts out of the way because, eh, taunts. Taunts first. Uh, killer signature. It's actually a taunt, so I'm I'm glad they added this one. I'm I'm fairly not offended by this. It's actually a taunt. So hey. Thank God. It's and it's not a shitty looping Fortnite emote. So thank God for that. So that's like a like a B tier. Two for Tango. Eh, I mean it, it it like this taunt at least references something that's related to ZF2, but it's just it's another looping emote that I don't really care for. It's just eh, it's like a like a low low C tier. Like these aren't taunts, right? They're emotes, and I'm really tired of people calling them taunts. They're they're just emotes. So, the eye to detail on this one's cute. Like, I like how the head pops off, but it's just, eh. Road Ranger! Fucking garbage! Yeah, I, I wish I could go back and downvote this one in the past, because, good god, we really don't need more stupid, wacky vehicle taunts in this game. I'm so tired of them. Every class has one, right? Except for Sniper? And Spy. Well, if you call the helicopter backpack a vehicle, but every class has one except Sniper. So we're going to have a whole fucking Mario Kart party now. Great. 
Can't wait for more wacky, goofy car taunts. I'm so... I'm over this shit, dude. I'm so tired of these fucking garbage. I'm tired of these... It's like, please stop turning TF2 into a crappy roleplay experience. Keep that in community servers. Like, I don't want to see people zipping around in cars. I want to play the game. Star Spangled Strategy is more of an emote and less of a taunt. But I'm kind of not offended by it because it's like something Soldier would do, so I'm okay with it. But it's definitely an emote more than a taunt. It's like... This is like C tier. Like C tier. Maybe, ah, like, high C tier. Uh, Killer Joke made it into the game based off of popularity alone, but I'm okay with that, because another taunt that's actually a taunt. So I'm alright with it. It's okay, it's good. I voted yes for this one, because, you know, it's the, but, um, it's like a B tier. B tier taunt. But another, like, silly, goofy emote that's, like, really kind of out of touch with the game. It's not A tier by any means. Like, like, the best taunt out of all of these they added is probably the one for the scout. Because this is something you would fully expect for the scout to do. With a taunt. Right? Not this, not this. Kind of this with soldier. Not this. Medic. I could see this as a taunt for a very specific scenario, and that's when you kill a spy. And because of that, I give it a pass. I give it a pass for that reason. You kill a spy with it, you whip it out, fine. I'm alright with that. Also reference to meet the medic, so I'm, you know, side, C tier. Uh, I did all the war paints already. I made a video about the war paints, so you can go look at those. Uh, let's do... I'll do unusual effects last, because that's where the spicy opinions come in, right? Uh, this biker set for heavy, it's okay. It's... We're in this era where creators are taking a lot of liberties with what they can do with items, right? Pushing it further and further to where it's, like, not really the class anymore. Like, the original biker jacket for heavy still looks like heavy, right? But this whole set is kind of pushing it into a territory where it's like, this isn't really TF2 anymore. This isn't the heavy anymore. It's all, yeah, someone points out that it's pretty busy. It's modeled and textured. It looks like a modern day, f I'm going to say it, I'm going to say it, I'm going to say the line, Fortnite. It looks like a Fortnite cosmetic set. It doesn't really mesh that well in the game. It doesn't really adhere to the art style and kind of the chunky nature. Too many small details. It doesn't really look like a TF2 item set. So it's just eh. Like D tier. This item set, however, I do quite like because this is something that's actually fitting for the spy. It's something you would fully expect him to wear. The glasses look weird. The glasses really don't look like TF2 glasses, if that makes sense. They look kind of more bulbous and cartoony. But the jacket is fine. I love the jacket. The hat's fine. The glasses look kind of strange. I wish... I, I think they could have been tweaked a bit to kind of mesh better, but... It's okay. Like, this is my... These are my favorite cosmetics in this case, minus the Elite Grade helmet. But I like these a lot. And... We already have the sniper hat that references the same piece of media, but I'm also okay with that because both hats kind of fit their respective classes and they fit the tone of the game, right? They're both, you know, they're both assassins. They kill people, so it, it meshes with the game just fine. I'm okay with it, right? And of course, people are going to say like, oh, Zesty's being a hypocrite because he doesn't like it when the same hat's put in the game twice. I think it's fine when it's totally appropriate and it meshes and matches the class that it's for, but not every class needs a ninja hat, or a cowboy hat, or, or what have you. That's when it gets stupid, right? The cosmetic needs to be appropriate for the class it's for, or appropriate for the game in general. Like, not every class needs a wacky, goofy vehicle ton. Not every class needs a cowboy hat, right? So, this is okay. But, like, putting, this, putting these items on heavy? No. Uh... <sighs> Awful. Like, just really big, stupid... Why? 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 Like, like these are the trash tier cosmetics in this case. Trade-up fodder? No one's going to use these. Really big, goofy, plastic shells. It's like, Demo Man uses sticky bombs, so give him a bomb hat! Again! Uh, we have the spiky helmet, we have the beanie, uh, the, uh, the, I think there's a third one? I don't know, but it's just like... Do we really need another one of these that no one's gonna use? Like, the version without the spikes is nice. If they had just added that, 
fine, but the rest, like, no. It's shit cosmetics, and they're trade-up fodder. Trade-up fodder, and no one likes them, so bye. Okay, Cranium Cooler. I like this one. I do like this hat because it's subtle. It's a subtle bit of wacky, a little bit of wacky. It's not this big goofy fan that's like popped on top of engineer's head. It still looks like a helmet. It's textured and it looks like a TF2 item. It doesn't look like something out of a different game. It's subtle wacky. Subtle wacky is fine. I actually like this one. It's not the fucking toaster hat that we got one year. That's dumb. This one's actually good. I do like it. I will agree. Yeah, the saturation might be a little bit too red. They did they did tone it up a little bit. But I, can you dye this hat? Can you paint it? Okay, cool. I can paint it to something that isn't as saturated. Like this. Like Team Spirit. Now it's fine. And also, something I like about this hat that I, th that I think should be done for all cosmetics is they mute the saturation on the brighter paints. And that looks nice. You have, like, the pitted dark spots that are retained on the helmet, and it's not this big, bright, fluorescent thing in your face. I think all cosmetics should do this, because it helps tone down the saturated nature of green and pink and white. So, I like this one. I might seek it out for my engineer. Uh, this, this set for Sniper. Yeah, I mean, it's... I mean, I understand it's referencing Counter-Strike, but... It just doesn't look right. Yeah, it doesn't feel right for Sniper. It's weird. It's this weird, big, bulky helmet for Sniper. It doesn't really fit him. It just does, it doesn't look right for... T it doesn't look right for Sniper, and it doesn't really look right for TF2 either. And, like, the vest is something that looks like... It, like, these are like Demo Man cosmetics, right? These are like Demo Man cosmetics. It would look better for Demo Man, but we'll put them on Sniper. Like, we have the blast vest for Demo Man that looks really good on him. But now we put that on Sniper, and it looks weird. It's this big, chunky thing that's just, like, not really appropriate. It's okay. It's not offensive. But it's just... It's not really okay for the class. I, I don't like it that much, honestly. And the fact this is Assassin Grade... No. Uh, next. Next, next, next. Okay. Do I talk about this now, or do I talk about it later? I have some choice words for this cosmetic set, but I don't know if I want to share them now, because I've written a video about this, and I use this as an example. So I'm going to save it for later, because it's going to be way more properly articulated in that video than what I can do here now. But I'll say two words, team recognition. This is not good for team recognition. And it will be explained more elaborately and completely in that video. So be patient for that. That's actually, that's going to be my next video, actually. I'm, I'm, I'm working on it right now. I'm working on a video about team recognition in TF2. So that will be coming out whenever it's done. Hopefully by next month. Uh, maybe, maybe by the end of the month. But we'll see. But I will say, uh, helmet's fine and the accessories are fine. The vest is not. These two things put together introduce a problem, and I'll explain why in that video. Uh, this set is a Solid Snake reference, but I look at this and I only see Rambo. Sorry, I, I, I look at this and all I see is Rambo, because I it's, that's 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 what I that's what I remember from growing up is Rambo movies and not and not Metal Gear. So it's okay. I like the hat a lot more than the pants. I think the hat's fine. I think the accessories are fine, but the pants just look weird. It looks weird to color half the player model to be green. This doesn't really mesh with the game that well. Like, Soldier's pants are also team colored. It's a very subtle team color, but when you remove that and replace it with all green, it looks funky. Green is very hard to get right in TF2, and it works well for smaller areas on player models and areas on maps, or just, like, simple grass. But on player models themselves, it's just not really good-looking. It doesn't affect team recognition, and the fact you can paint them, it helps it a little bit. Like, you can paint them a team color, and it kind of, like, like these, like, when it makes them more gray, that's okay. But the green just looks off. It looks off. Yeah, they should have made them team colored and not green because like the green and blue are okay but the green and the red like green, okay so i will always forever stand by this but green and red contrast in the most horrific way possible that will always be ugly to me 
always be ugly to me. So, I, I don't like the pants. I think everything but the pants is fine. Yeah. Don't like the pants. Uh, here we go. Another cosmetic that, once again, pushes the limits for what is for what is a, a merc in TF2 anymore. Is this even Sniper anymore? This is now just a random character in the game. This is this... Am I, who am I looking at anymore? Cool. Nice. Yeah, it's this weird bulky thing. The hair, the hair was part of a cosmetic set that didn't get added. So I don't like this one. There were better there were better choices than this. Also, yeah, let's make it paintable. Oh. So, I don't think I need to say anything about how this could fuck with team recognition. You have this big dark neutral color and in the middle you have something that's not team colored. What do you think the eye is going to gravitate towards first? The team color or that? Again, I'll explain this more properly in my video. So, ah, that's a bad one. Oh, I forgot this one. Uh, yeah, wacky goo. Okay, so when I say Fortnite tier cosmetics, this is this is like the perfect example of, of Fortnite tier cosmetic. My God, it's it's referencing Avatar. I know that. But it's just why. No, no, I I don't like this one. Sorry. It looks like it belongs in Fortnite. I'm sorry. Like, is this pyro anymore? What's going on? No, I don't like it. Uh, this set. I like this set. This is nice. Like, this still retains a lot of like pyro shape. It retains a lot of his color. It retains that sooty gradient going down to his pants. Like, you look at this. And you still look at this and go, oh, hey, that's Pyro, right? I like this one for that reason, because it kind of retains the air of TF2. It's like a nice, subtle set of cosmetics. It just looks good. It's not amazing by any means, but it's like, I'm all right with it. Also, the paint region's tiny, so I'm okay with that. The coat's all right. I like. I kind of like how they did the, uh, the pipe. I like how the pipe is just jammed into his mask. <laughs> <laughs> I, that's really dumb. Also counterintuitive to having a gas mask on. The pipe is just, just stuck in the side. That's pretty funny. I do like that set. Yes, I know. I know. Oh, Zesty doesn't like... Zesty doesn't like fun. He doesn't like color. He's like... He likes boring... Bo yes, fuck you. I, this is like... This is, my, this is the best cosmetic they added. I fucking love... Like, look at this shit. Look at this loadout I made. This looks so good. I had to buy a strange one immediately. I had to buy a strange one of these immediately. Because look how fucking good this looks, dude. This is perfect for Medic. It is awesome. It is simple, but so good. And look, and like, and look, look, look at the colors. Like, this is a cosmetic from two... When was this added? Like, the mountain cab was added in, like, 2009, 2010. 13 years later... This cosmetic meshes perfectly with cosmetics that were added in the beginning of the game's lifespan. That's nuts. It's such a good cosmetic. I love it. It's great. Awesome. And now it may, like so this uh, I'm, I'm going to be serious. This this cosmetic it's made me want to buy more shit for my medic. Because I've been, like, trying to seek out, like, a good medic set that, like, where all of my shit meshes nicely together. And this is, like, the first medic set that I fucking love. And what I want to do is I want to get an unusual medic's mountain cap, but they're all so fucking expensive. It sucks. Like, I want to get an unusual medic's mountain cap with some decent effect, but even, like, burning flames, which used to be, like, 60 keys on this hat, people are asking for, like, 190 or 200. It's fucking insane. Because these this hat is old... Not many are in circulation, so trader mains scoop them all up and then blow them to insane prices, and unless you pay their extortionate values, you'll never get them. Sucks. So I'll stick with my plain one for now, because these don't come in strange. Uh, S tier. S tier. S tier fucking cosmetic. I fucking love it. Do I need to say anything? I don't think I need to say anything. I, I, I don't think I need to say what's wrong with this cosmetic. 
I don't think I need to say what's wrong with this cosmetic. However, I can show you. Hold on, I gotta find this uh, this image example that was sent to me here. Where are you? I'll find it. Hold on. It's buried in my DMs with somebody. I gotta find it. Where is it? Damn it. Hold on. I'll find it. There you are. So... Uh, yeah. Yeah. You're, pl you're playing the game at a glance. What team is he on? You have no fucking idea. You see him for a split second, you have no idea what team he's on. You look at it for a couple of seconds, I say, okay, yeah, it's there. But now envision you're in the game. You're in the game with all of the other visual noise going around. You're moving around. He's moving around. You see the sniper off in the distance. And the first thing you see is gray. What team he's on? No fucking idea. Yeah. Pretty bad. There are no, there are no paint regions on this one. See, what's funny is, like, people say it's obviously blue because you're looking at it for a couple of seconds. But if something negatively detracts from team recognition for even a split second... That fucks with the game, because that immediately gives an advantage over you, that, that, that immediately gives an advantage to someone else over you. Because in the time you're thinking, oh shit, is this guy on my team? In that split second, they're already shooting you. And like, people fail to understand that. Team recognition is incredibly important in this game. It's like, oh my god. Anyway, moving on. Uh, Brothers in Blues. Eh, it's okay. A, it's a fairly inoffensive multi-class hat. You know, the glasses are okay. The hat's like, it's like another generic fedora. It's alright. References the Blues Brothers. It's fine. Yeah, so it's it's Medingus. Yeah, so let's say let's say you're here. I'll, I'll, I will do a nice visual example for you, alright? I'll do a nice visual example for you, okay? As to why that cosmetic is a problem, okay? Uh, I will show you a very common scenario on one of your favorite maps, my friend, Badwater. If you can think of one instance where a cosmetic negatively detracts from team recognition, it should not be in this game. Period. If it negatively detracts from gameplay, it should not be in this game. No matter how good it looks. I'm sorry, that's a fact. Just like those pyro cosmetics. Alright, let's, let, let, let's say you're soldier. Like, let's say you're soldier, right? You're walking, you're, you're, on, you're on bad water, you're on red team, right? You're going in. Walking out. Your team's, your team's getting pushed hard right now on second point. You look out, you look away. There's a sniper up there for that brief moment, but then someone's over here to your right, so you start shooting at them. But you couldn't tell what team that sniper was on by just doing this. Most of the time when you engage someone, you only look at them that quickly. That's not enough time to tell what team someone's on. You should be able to do this and immediately tell what team someone's on. If you can't do that and tell, it's fucked up. That's how fast team recognition works in this game. And if in that split second where you look at someone and you cannot tell what team they're on, you're fucked. The only time where you're doing this is like, oh, I'm walking this way. Oh, look, there's a sniper. Blech. But that's indicative of the problems that sniper has in the game, not team recognition. So. No, I don't disagree. Paints really paints began to detract from that a long time ago, but at least most cosmetics have relatively tame paint regions. But now we're getting more and more cosmetics that that don't that don't have tame paint regions. Uh, case in point, uh, 
Uh, yeah. Yeah. But this is fine, right? This is totally okay. This is okay, right? These cosmetics are totally fine. Nothing wrong with these. Oh yeah, T something that paints more than half of Pyro's player model is something that's not team colored. Great idea. Oh, people crying about Fem Pyro again. God, who cares? It's just boobs. Oh my God. Chill out. Anyway. Uh, is that all the cosmetics? No, a few more. Uh, helmet. I like this helmet. Fucking awesome. This is one of the first elite grades that I'm probably going to go out of my way to buy for myself. I like this a lot. I like that it has a different style for each class where you have like a, you have the team logo on there and like a different thing on the side. It's quite good. I like this helmet. It's quite nice. I will buy this probably in Strange. Paint sucks, but oh well. Uh, this shirt is ancient. Put in the game, like, why? Like, this cosmetic shows its age. It's not the best. It's not the best work. The modeling leaves something to be desired. The texture work isn't all that. It just doesn't look that good. Just, eh. I'm not a fan of this one. I think it's just, it, it's not, it needed, it needed more time in the oven. It needed a lot more time in the oven. It needed more polish. It needed more work done on it. It's just not appropriate as like a complete product for the game. Yeah, it needs a remake. I agree. I mean, hey, this is cute. You know, it's like, hey, it's a, a first aid kit, but stylistically, it doesn't really fit the game. Like, this is just another piece of trade-up fodder that honestly no one's going to use. So, another another mediocre and somewhat unfortunate addition that is just, eh. But it's Half-Life, guys. But I know, but it doesn't really fit in the game. Uh, and then another fairly generic fedora for Scout, which actually looks quite good. I like that cosmetic, so, like, I have it for Scout. See? This, this is nice. I like this hat. Looks good. Very, very Indiana Jones. Very Indiana Jones, and I like it. I think it looks good. Okay, that's all the cosmetics. That's all the taunts. Unusual effects. Oh, God. Listen, I just, I, you hit a point where you keep getting the same neon color palette swaps of effects that just don't really look like they belong in the game anymore. This is another one of them. It's like, yeah, I can't, it's, it's just jellyfish. It's not the worst one we got because it gets worse. I mean, Sakura Smoke Bomb's okay. It's, you know, it's more flower clip art, but it doesn't look that bad. I feel like they could have toned down the number of flowers so it's a bit less busy, but it's just kind of a generic, like, low tier. It's okay. It's not great. The Bubbles one... I'm always going to be a fan of the classic. I'm always going to be a fan of the classic, just regular bubbling or cauldron bubbles. This one just adds a little bit more visual noise. I'm not a fan of it. I like the classic one more. Just another, like mediocre just okay i don't know just i'm not a fan of it okay these okay so these effects grew on me a little bit these effects grew on me a little bit because they're not as hideously saturated as previous like nebula effects i kind of like these they do have a little bit too much going on but in terms of like their gaudy nature these are okay I i'm not really offended by these like these are probably some of the these are some of the better effects, right? They're they're kind of reminiscent of um like Galactic Gateway and Dark Doorway from that one Scream Fortress, but even those are more saturated than these. These are more toned down. So these are these are these are more okay, in my opinion. These these tread a little bit more into the territory of like, okay, those are those are alright. It's not an eyesore. This, however, is an eyesore. My god. This is fucking awful. It's just a solid disc with lava lamp bubbles. 
Taunt effects were a mistake. They should have never added these into the game. I, it's like, I cannot think of a more egregious bastardization of this game's art style than taunt effects, right? Because it takes what's initially isolated to just your head and puts it over the entire body. And I like how Uncle Dane, like, tries to make an argument for them in his video, but they just look so bad that he can't. <laughs> it's just... God. Shouldn't have been added. Another set of terrible taunt effects. Awful. I don't like that it bobs up and down. The, the fact that it bobs up and down, and it has the trail, and it rotates, and it has the, the pieces of paper coming out of it. I feel like they could have removed one of those four things and tone down how busy it is, and then I would like it more. And I'll give them credit, at least it's not an, an orbiting PNG. Like, at least the object itself is animated, so that's at least different. But it's low. It's like, it's going to be a low-tier effect. No one's going to go out of the way to buy this one. Just, eh. This effect, however, is the first one that we've received in a long time. That is very much reminiscent of classic TF2 effects. Mountain Halo is an effect that looks like it belongs in the game. It looks like an original Valve made effect back when Valve at least kind of made them loosely adhere to like, okay, yes, these are meant to be these gaudy things, but we make their colors and they're kind of like, you know, they, they feel like a source asset. They feel like a TF2 asset, right? This one is S tier. It's really fucking good. I love this. I love this effect. I'm super glad they added it. Deserved to be added. Reminiscent of, you know, Death at Dusk and Morning Glory. Really good effect. Very happy. Very happy it was added. Okay, so Wildflower Meadows. This is another one that I was initially, like, I initially I kind of rolled my eyes at this one. I'm like, ah, oh, great. But, you know what? For a taunt effect, I kind of like it. It's grass. It's subtle. It's not like this big, hyper-fluorescent, gaudy thing in your face. I like it. Like, it's 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 a subtle, decent effect, you know? It's it's cute. Like, like you can get it for Lawnmower's Engineer Taunt, and you're mowing the grass. I guess. I don't know. Yeah, it's, it's, it's one of the more toned-down effects, and for that reason, I like it. Like, subtlety goes a long way, right? Not every unusual effect needs to be this bright, neon thing in your face. This is an example of that. You can have a decent effect that doesn't look like, you know, clown vomit. I have choice words. I, I just... Why? 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 We don't... We don't need this. It's just shitty. Like, it's all clip art, right? It's like... It, you, it's... Look at this. You have a still image of a starfish. You have these little spike rats. It's just... It's so bad. It's so shit. It's honestly one of the worst taunt effects that's ever been put in this game. It's fucking awful. Um, it's easy, dog shit. And now this is the number one biggest bastardization of the game's art style ever put in the game. Holy God, what the fuck were they thinking with this one? Absolute, pure, unadulterated slop. My God. Horrible. Fucking horrible. This is officially in-game. This is a taunt effect that is officially in-game, guys. Holy Christ, what were they thinking? It's so bad. Trader mains are gonna love it. Trader mains are gonna love this shit. Holy God, what a mistake. I like this guy. How is that in-game? I ask this too. How is this in-game? Seriously. Oh my... Ugh. I shouldn't need to explain why this doesn't belong, but it doesn't belong. Giant pink clip art unicorns with rainbow trails and a big orbiting rainbow disc and sparkles. And then, you know, RGB pink gamer color all around the player model. Like I thought the last RGB, you know, gamer taunt effect that was added was pretty bad. This is fucking horrible. 
Oh, God. Solar Scorch is decent. Like, again, it's like, again, taunt effects are big and obnoxious, but this is at least like, hey, this is dusty. This is dusty TF2, right? Yeah, it's, it's in style with the game, and that carries it a long way. In my opinion, this this is something that's like, okay, fine. This this meshes okay. I'm not like I'm not yanked out of my experience by seeing a hyper fluorescent rainbow wheel underneath the scout pogoing with, you know, the fucking I don't know, whatever shit he causes like the, the fucking bouncer hat, right? Actually, okay, I lied, I lied. This is pretty bad. This, this is this is easily the, the like this this is the worst effect they had. Like, look at little fishies, guys! Look at the little fish! Yay! It's, why does this even belong in the game? It doesn't mesh with anything. It's just fish. Oh god! Like uh, in terms of the worst part about this update, easily the easily the unusual effects. The unusual effects are easily the worst part of this update. Why'd they add this? No one's gonna use this. This is just really tacky, gaudy crap. Fuck, it's horrible. <laughs> it's old as shit, too. It's just so much. It's just so much. They, they could have toned it down a little bit. Right? They could have toned it down. Like, it did, you don't need that many coins. There's so much going on. It's so busy. It's so noisy. Good lord. Also, this effect was rendered in Blender. It's like you have these really cheap Blender-rendered 3D coins getting vomited out of the head. It doesn't even look like something that belongs in TF2. They could have at least, like, stylized the coins so they kind of look, like, worn up, like, beaten up or something so it, like, meshes with the game a bit more. But good lord. I do know... That there is an active effort right now underway that people are trying to unbox the the plumber's cap with this effect so if you're opening rainy day cases and you get the plumber's cap with this effect it's like a ten thousand dollar hat it's like it's like mario getting coins whoever unboxes that is going to be a millionaire overnight watch I love this effect so much. I'm so glad they put this effect in. It's so nice. It's just this nice little subtle. It's it's just oh, I love it. It's it's. I don't know. I just like this one. I know I know I know this effect is like universally hated by everybody, but I like this one. It's this nice little subtle effect. You know, little glowing fireflies. I really want an out of sight. I want an out of sight. I want this hat. I want this hat with fireflies, but sadly, I don't think anyone's going to be able to unbox it because it comes from the gunmetal collection and those cases are like $7 a piece. It's never going to get unboxed, but I love this effect. I'm super glad they added it. It's fucking phenomenal. I like it. Check trades. Okay. Good time to check trades too, because that is everything. There you go. That is the official review of all of the content. Done. We've made it through. I've probably pissed people off with my opinions, but what else is new? We got to get cancelled on Twitter again for thinking versus Saxon Hale isn't appropriate for the game, even though it's fun and I say it's fun and I enjoy playing it. We'll see what happens.